So welcome to the next session in this room here. Um, we will be, uh, the topic will be introducing out of, you know, integrating out of process graphical content into a quick view. And our presenter will be uh, Giulio Camufo. <laughs> Thank you. Please give a warm welcome to our presenter. So, thank you. Um, so, yeah, uh, this talk will be about how to integrate uh, the graphical content coming from uh, a helper application into the main one. Because, uh, so, there, there is one problem with, uh, or more than one problem actually, which I have noticed in while working on on different applications, which can be either uh, we have a, a big application that has, like, for example, many sub windows, if, if, you, if, if you want, uh, which is not rendering fast enough and is losing frames. So it would be beneficial to render part of it uh, in a parallel way and then composite everything together. Or another problem is that uh, you want to have uh, third party plugins inside your application, but uh, you want to be safe from a security point of view, so you don't want the plugin to access your memory and, and, and change what, what you're doing, basically. Uh, you just want to, to render in parallel. Uh, so you can have a kind of like a threading application, a threaded application, but uh, since OpenGL may be difficult to use with threads, or the drivers often are bugged when, when using OpenGL in a threaded way. So uh, having a separate application will help with that. So uh, a solution is, yeah, yeah, as you can see with beautiful colors here, is to have a separate client and uh, copy or rather access the, the content of the, of the client into your main application. Now, how to do that? Uh, we can split the problem in two parts. So, you, uh, one part is sharing the content, and the other part is uh, displaying that content once that the, the main application has access to it. So, the naive approach is to use GI root pixels. So, this is a, a quick example. So, uh, in your application, you render your content, and then you, you create a, a, a shared memory file. So you create a temporary file, and you memory map it, and then you read the pixels into the file. And uh, you send the, the file descriptor of the file to the other application through some way, like it can be dbus or a raw uh, Unix socket or some other way. On the receiving side, once you have the FD, you memory map it, uh, you, and uh, you get the pixels, and you, s you send the pixels back to the GPU, basically. Now, this has uh, some problems. It works, technically, yes, but uh, it is very slow, because it needs to move the texture from the GPU to the CPU, and then to the CPU back to the GPU. And uh, using JRead pixels blocks the, the rendering and, until uh, uh, blocks the application. Sorry, until the rendering is done, because the GPU needs to. Uh, usually, the, G, the GPU will work in a asynchronous way, so the application is not waiting for the GPU to render. Usually, but uh, when you call JRead pixels, the application will block until the GPU has done. So, can we do better? Yes, we can. There are various ways to do it. You can use Wayland, which is uh, quite uh, common nowadays. Uh, we, uh, it works on Linux and some BSDs, which have, are part in it. Uh, you can use IVI Share, which is a Wayland protocol extension, which is kind of non-standard, non but it is uh, also used sometimes. Um, if you don't have Wayland, you, you can have EGL Stream, which is a, some, it's, it's a suite, if you want, of uh, EGL extensions by NVIDIA for Linux. If you are on, on, on Android, you can use Grelloc. Uh, on Linux, there is also DMA, DMA buff, 
uh, that's only on Misado, or maybe others. All these uh, techniques allow you to share the, the content without having to copy it and without having to go through the CPU. So I will show a couple of them here. The other ones are basically, uh, they work in the same way. The concept is the same, so it's not difficult to adapt them. So I will show here an example of, of how to do it with Wayland, of, well, with Qt Wayland to be more precise. So it is very easy, actually. So if the, this is your original application, say you have a, a window with a, this my UI item, which is your item that you declared, and a, a content item inside. So say you want to move this content item out of the of your application to a helper client. So uh, you you need to uh, transform your application into a compositor, basically. So you you create a Wayland compositor, you add an output to it, which is basically a Wayland, the Wayland way to call a window. So uh, you, you put the window in the output, and this is basically the, the same code uh, that we had before. With, sorry, window with the item inside, it's the same code, just the content item is moved out. After that, uh, you create uh, a shell item, which is uh, uh, the way that uh, Wayland understands that a client wants to be shown, basically. So uh, when, uh, when a client creates a, sh a shell surface, as you can see here, uh, an item, a shell surface item is created, which will show the, the client surface with the, the parent set to, to be the UI item here. So basically, you have the same hierarchy here as here. So this is uh, the compositor part. On the client part, instead, uh, it's even more simple because uh, your application will just use the Wayland uh, plugin. So either by setting the Qt, QPA platform environment variable or using the dash platform argument. And uh, the code of, uh, of your client will be just the content item that, that it was removed from the compositor client, compositor application, sorry. So with Wayland, uh, this is all you need to do. So this is uh, the, basically the most simple compositor you, you can have. I can try to show you. Why is it not showing that? Ah, sorry. Oh. Okay, yeah, so this is uh, the most basic compositor you can have with the same code as in the slide. And uh, you can just run applications inside it. See, this is uh, QDB's viewer from the Qt simple clients. So this is uh, running inside the, the compositor, as you can see. And by the way, you can have a lot, many Wayland compositors nested one inside the other. So it is not a problem if you are running your application inside a Wayland compositor, you can still have your application be a compositor inside the compositor. That's, that works fine, it's not a problem. Okay, so uh, another approach is EGL stream. If you don't want to use or don't or you are not able to use Wayland for some reason. You can use, and uh, you are using NVIDIA because as far as I know, only NVIDIA has it. Uh, you can use EGSTream, but uh, you have to write some more code because there is no library for it. There could be, but there is no, there is none. So how, how it works is uh, you, 
you create, you get the display, the EGL display from, uh, from Qt, the, the display that is being used for rendering. You create a stream with the display, and then with, uh, you create a texture and you attach it to the stream. After that, you get a file descriptor, you send it to the, the client, and then uh, the, the texture uh, is attached to the stream and can be used to to read the content. In the no, sorry. In the client, once it has received the, the file descriptor, you, uh, it creates a stream from the file descriptor and a surface to to draw on. So it calls make current and then draws as usual. So uh, disclaimer here, I am assuming you you know a bit about EGL, but anyway. This is pretty, once you have created the stream here, this is a standard EGL uh, rendering. So for the client, uh, if you want to, if you have to use EGL stream, you will have to write a custom, a custom QPA plugin for, for it. If, if you want to use Qt for the client too. Otherwise, you have your own code. Uh, so once we have the the texture of the content, we have to show it in the in the scene. So there are three ways, basically, to do it. You can sh show it behind the QML UI, above the UI, or as part of the QML UI. So behind and above is very easy. You just you have your view. You connect to the on before rendering signal, and uh, you. In the texture, you, you draw whatever you draw uh, using OpenGL. Then you reset the window to the state it, it is expecting. And that's it, basically. Uh, you have to remember to use Qt direct connection here because uh, this on before rendering signal is called from the rendering thread of the Qt Quick. So if you want to use the OpenGL context, you need to be in the, in the same thread. So by using direct connection, even if the signal is called uh, on a dif different thread than the, the, the usual one, the, the, the slot will be called in the, in the rendering thread. Otherwise, it will be queued in the event loop, and it will be called in the UI thread. For the above the UI, I'm not sure what the use case for that would be, but if basically, Almost identical, just the signal is different because you have on after rendering instead of on before rendering. A third approach is as part of the scene graph. So this is the most flexible approach and it allows to put the, the content inside of the scene graph and after, we, after that you can, you can also have uh, effects on it, uh, maybe scale the, or, or apply some after rendering effects like blur or HDR or stuff like that. So we will need to declare a few classes for that because it's a more complex, a more complex approach. So we have a state here holding the texture, and, you, and we create a material with, with the state. So this is a, a very simple uh, class from QQuick. Qt quick to, to declare a material. So we just uh, declare a shader, the very, most simple shader you, you can make up to draw a texture. And the fragment shader. And the, so this will, yeah, the most simple shader you can, you can come up with too. And the, these attributes here, they, they're just written in the list of the attributes used by the shader, so vertex and text code here. And this material is used by a QQuick item subclass. In, so you need to override this update paint node uh, method, which is the method that is called by, uh, by the, the scene graph when, when an item need, needs to render, let's say. So by creating a a geometry node, uh, 
we can uh, set a geometry for the item. So a quad in this case of four vertexes. Uh, and we apply we apply the material to the 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 node. After that uh, we we mark the node dirty and we set the texture to be used by the material with this. So here I'm not showing it, but the texture this texture here is uh, uh, is this texture here. So wait, okay. So when uh, when with the GIS stream or any other approach you, you may follow, you have a texture. You 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 set it to be used by the material here, and uh, you you mark the the node to be if you mark the node dirty. So that that means that a scene graph will know that it needs to be redone, and that's it. You return the node, and that's all you need in in Q, in Q quit to show a custom texture, basically. So, yeah. Uh, after that, uh, you register the item to the QML engine. So with the, no, sorry. And you can use it as normal. So this, this my item here will, will contain the content of your client application. How that the client application works, of course, is another part entirely because the writing a QPA plugin is a bit complex, would need a talk of, of its own anyway. So the conclusion here are that splitting your app uh, make it, makes it more robust and more secure. Don't use GRUID pixels because that's very slow. Using Qtwayland saves you a lot of time. And uh, by the way, there is a, if you want to know more about Qtwayland, how to write a compositor, uh, wait here for the next talk. Um, if you can't or don't want for some reason, I don't know, don't, uh, if you don't want to use Qtwayland, uh, there are other solutions. Of, uh, of course, that depends on the platform that you are on. Like, I'm sure that if you're on Windows, there are some solutions, but I'm not aware of them. But, yeah. So, if you have some questions? Anybody questions? Here. If I want to have alpha blending of, of from the different parts, is that possible? You mean like two clients? Yes, to to yes, that's per perfectly possible. That's the, in, the mat oh. in the material, you just uh, set it to to have the alpha blending, and uh, also in the shadow, you you have to take account for that. But it's perfectly possible. Any more questions? And I want would like to. A big round of applause for our presenter, Julio Camufo. Thank you.